They don't know what card they're going to get. They're just playing the odds of what's, uh, what's still available in that deck. How many face cards are still there? How many aces are still there? And when the deck or the shoe goes cold, they got to get away from that table. But they'll cut your arms off in the casinos. You start taking big uh, money from them like that, you won't leave with that money. You won't be allowed to cash those chips in. And they're going to try to prosecute you. <laughs> Imagine that. And here they are cheating the entire time. Cheating the absolute entire time, guaranteeing that you have all the odds against you. But when you start winning, oh, no, you're a cheat. We can't have you here. You got to go. The market doesn't like card counters either. And when you know, they make it a little bit harder for you. I'll just say it that way. Okay. So what you want to do is learn what it does, how it books price. And then casually grow over a, a period of time. Don't flash in the pan, go out there and try to run it up real quick. Because all you're going to do is put a spotlight on you. And that will start being a problem for your trades. They'll slip you. They'll requote you. Other things that I'm not going to talk about here. <laughs> but same treatment as a, a card counter. Let's put it that way. But just in a different approach. So if we can agree just for the sake of this discussion, just if you don't believe there's an algorithm, this, for the purpose of me explaining something to you, just pretend for a moment that you do believe it is. Okay? And then at the end of the conversation, then you can move back to whatever you want to believe afterwards. But if there is an algorithm and it controls price and it only affords the market to go so high or so low for that given day, that means from the time it starts trading to the time it settles for that session, all of that price fluctuation, everybody in the, the retail perspective are, are all going to see it as random price delivery and there might be a pattern there that may justify them taking action on it so they have a religious belief in some kind of pattern for the sake of the pattern they're going to buy or sell and i'm trying to offer you a different perspective where you should be thinking okay what is the prevailing market sentiment right now about that given market is it likely to continue higher or lower for the next several days for the up to the whole duration of the new week coming? Okay, because right now while we're talking, it is 40, uh, yeah, 40 minutes after 10 a.m. Eastern time. So we have several hours before we get to the, the new week opening at 6 o'clock Eastern time. So the markets are, are flat. They're not trading right now. And you should be thinking about what that monthly, that weekly chart is doing. Would, would benefiting, well, I'm sorry, would seeing the price dropping lower to an old low or a, a gap of some sort, would it be beneficial for smart money if they were short? Would it be beneficial, based on what that monthly and weekly chart shows right now, would it be beneficial if the market was likely to go higher if smart money was long? To, to go to an old high or go to an inefficiency above where we settled at on Friday. That's your first question every single Saturday or Sunday, or if you do your analysis in the, in the Friday evening or whatever. But before Sunday's opening, you need to do some reflecting on the monthly and the weekly chart because it should give you a long-term slow expectation where price is likely to go. And if it's not obvious, then drop down to the next lower time frame, which is going to be the daily. If you can't ascertain where the market is likely to draw to on the daily chart, then you absolutely have no business dropping down into the lower time frames. Because you will be gambling. You will absolutely be gambling. Because you won't know trading on these smaller time frames when that next trade you're taking is actually a higher time frame entry. That's going to be the biggest displacement. And if you're trading without a stop loss, which I see a lot of that, just look at the screenshots. Of everybody's tossing around between each other on Twitter, on Facebook, and on Instagram. They, they don't even put a stop loss on, even the save face. 
<laughs> because they know if they put a stop loss on there, even though they don't have one while their trade is uh, panning out in their demo account, they don't want to put that stop loss on because everybody will know with a record that that's where their stop loss was. And when the market eventually goes down to that level, they would be technically stopped out because they don't want to get stopped out. They want to hold on to something that keeps moving. They can come back and say, see how smart I was. So that's why I, when I look at people and they share charts and they say, I've got the same trade as you, ICT. First question is, is I want to see the execution. I want to see the price, not the line, because the line could be three days ago. And it just so happens to look like it moved away from that, that price level. So I call my own students out with that bullshit. When I see people share a, a trade and they're a student of mine and they show their entry and they show their, they're getting ready to get their limit order tagged, but there's no stop loss. I'm not congratulating them on their good entry. I'm not congratulating them on the right draw and liquidity as an exit. I'm criticizing them by saying, where's your stop? You use a stop. That's mentoring. That's a mentor. That's someone who's trying to teach responsibility. I'm going to find your weakness because you're ignoring it and you need to work there. And in the marketplace, it capitalizes on everyone's weakness. What are the two most critical ones? Greed and fear. All it has to do is operate on those two pretenses. It's going to either scare the shit out of you or it's going to entice you that you're going to make a lot of money. Either one of them is going to cause action. It's going to cause a reaction, a response, a cause and effect. As a human being, you don't always know how you're going to react to something. And especially in trading, because most people don't do a lot of documentation stage of the development in the beginning. That means journaling, tape reading, identifying in laboratory experiments of watching price action, recording what your emotions are. Even though there's no money on the line, even though you haven't even pressed a demo entry, you are emotionally committed to the outcome of whatever opinion you form based on that chart at that time. Don't believe me? Think about this. You've, you've opened up Euro dollar. You opened up uh, Japanese yen. You've looked at coffee futures if you're a commodity trader. You're looking at Bitcoin if you're a crypto crazy guy. And now for, uh, for futures, you're watching NQ, Dow, NASDAQ. And you look at the chart right away. You're like, oh, I think it's going to go here. And it doesn't go. Oh, I wasn't, uh, it doesn't matter because I wasn't in the trade. You quickly dismiss it. You quickly push it away like, oh, it doesn't matter. No one saw me say that. No one heard me think that. I didn't press a demo entry. I don't have to reset a demo account. I didn't take a loss in my funded account challenge. I didn't take a loss in my funded account. I didn't lose money in my real account. You're making excuses to push it aside. That's the worst thing you could do. You need to explore why you felt that impulse to think, oh, it's going to go up or it's going to go down to this. When you dismiss those instances where you have impulsively committed to some outcome and it doesn't work. The first thing you want to do is push it away like it didn't happen. Wrong. Because when you start trading with real money or in a manner where it's going to take from you money or prevent you from reaching your funded account because you're paying for those accounts. And if you get wrapped up in this loop of ignoring your faults, you keep doing the same thing over and over again, failing and blowing the account and blowing the account and blowing the account and never fixing the underlying issue. And the only thing that increases in, in fervent peach, uh, uh, pace is your pursuit to quickly reset the account or pay for a new challenge. And that just proves that you're out of control. You're not in control. You're emotionally stimulated beyond all comprehension you're, you're, you're hopped up on goofballs. You don't even recognize the fact that you're, you're doing everything wrong because now you, you're now more passionate about doing it faster and quicker. And, and that way it'll cancel out that discomfort that you keep blowing the accounts. And you, you look at these people that are honest online and they're saying that they've reset their account 100 plus times. I don't know how much that stuff costs. I've never done it, but that sounds like it's pretty expensive over time. And are you willing to reset a hundred times and never make money? Because that's the, that's the equivalent of someone that goes to a casino and sits there knowing damn well that they have 
taking every bit out of their bank account. They only went there with a certain dollar amount. This is all I'm going to spend. But because they can't get out of that loop, that gambler's loop, where they don't recognize the tells that they have in themselves, that the self-destructive impulses that you know, if you've been paying attention, you're about to start feeling that. If you don't recognize those things, the market is going to capitalize on that. And it makes it feel like they come after you specifically. Because you've ignored all the warning signs that you as a human being keep materializing and manifesting in your behavior, in your thought process, and in your executions or lack of executions or lack of using a stop loss. That's why in the beginning I tell people it's going to be six months before you should ever be pressing the button with money behind it because not all of you have the same measure of character flaws. Some people have a lot of them, and it may require longer than six months. It depends on how troubled you are. But if you're a very detail-oriented person, you're honest about everything, and you're honest about yourself, and you're not trying to be something that you're not, you're not pretending to be someone that's more equipped than you really are, you're probably not going to require six months of figuring out what your problems are. But you have to identify what they are, because otherwise you won't realize that that is your downfall. And what I'm going to teach today is going to be the reasons why that takes place. You haven't identified how you're falling victim to yourself. Okay, the market's not beating you. You beat yourself. The market didn't blow your account. You blew it. 90% of the time, you knew before you took that last trade that blew your account, you shouldn't have done it. And you shouldn't be doing it. But you didn't, you didn't stop. Because you're, you're caught up in that gambler's loop. You're numb to it. Oh, well, if I blow it, I'll just reset it. And then I'll, I'll feel fresh with a brand new start. But it doesn't feel that way, does it? Because now you're scared. The next trade you take on your new one, I don't want to have a losing trade because that means it's going to freak me out. I'm going to jinx it. And then I'm going to go right back in the same thing. But you lie to yourself in that last trade before your account gets blown. If I blow it, I'll just reset it and I'll be fine. But you're not fine. You're building thicker and thicker scar tissue. And it's hard to trade in that. And if you're trying to be an online personification of a successful trader, but you're not proving that because you keep having to reset your accounts, that is even worse of scar tissue. So it's unfortunate because you know I teach these things and I prove it and my students that do well and listen to it, they, they stand out. But I do have students that can trade, but they don't how they don't know how to wrestle themselves. They haven't done the documentation stage of their own development. In the beginning, they didn't do the things I'm teaching in this mentorship 2024. They, didn't, they have not spent any time doing that. So that's why they have hit and miss results. That's why they will they can make money. They can get a payout or two and then blow it. And they go into a tailspin for months. And then they might make a little bit of money again down the road, but then they blow it again. What's, what's broken? Them. They are the underlying issue. You are always going to be the underlying issue. It's not the method. It's not the market doing it to you. It's you. So with that foundation, I want you to think about how 99% of retail traders have no concern for trying to make themselves prepared for the ebb and flow of profitability, losing, profitability, losing in the beginning. They just want it to be a lottery win and then it's off to the races for the rest of their life. They just keep making more money. The way the market capitalizes on that weak mindset is because they're ill-equipped. The first thing that the market does every single day is it hides the narrative. What is a narrative? What the market's actually going to do for the day that makes the daily candle. That's the real candlestick range theory. <laughs> Not that bullshit you see fucking panned around on Twitter right now. Nonsense. The narrative on how that daily range is going to form. It starts with, are we going to have an up close or a down close on the day? You're not trying to predict the closing price. You're just looking at the monthly, the weekly, and the daily to determine what is the probabilities for the market to go lower and close lower or go higher and close higher. What would be, what would be things that would help with that? Well, if the monthly and weekly chart are reaching for an old high, and they're in close proximity to it relative to that time frame. It still might be hundreds or a thousand handles away still. 
but you can see clearly that there, it's it's drawing to that higher time frame area of either inefficiency or an old high or an old low, something to that effect. And then in a daily chart, you, you start seeing each individual daily candlestick still moving in that direction, even though they may have one or two days that are opposing that. If we're bullish, you might see one or two down days in the week. But majority of the days of the week, you know, majority of each individual daily candle is using an up day. That means it's it's confirming that it's it's gravitating towards that weekly or monthly draw. And by hiding the narrative, I mean that they're going to cause some kind of initial excitement. That's the Judas swing in the morning. Okay, and what they'll do is they'll use the 8.30 news time, even if there is no economic calendar release, 8.30 is still creating some kind of a Judas swing. Now, think about that. We would expect, oh, the news is going to push the market around. That's what they'll say. The news pushes price up and down. No, it doesn't. The buyers and the sellers at the time of the news when nobody could even get trades in, but yet it's buying and selling pressure. You see how fast this shit falls apart? But because they say it to you so many times, and it's in every book, and everybody just regurgitates it and says the same thing over and over again, Hitler, Hitler proved it. You tell a lie big enough and loud enough and long enough, eventually everybody will believe it. But when I'm standing here and telling you, this is what it really is doing. And then what I'm telling you it's going to do, it does it. it, it and not that I'm trying to prove that you need to be right or that I'm trying to prove that I'm right. I'm just saying the logic is right. That's that's the point here. Okay, so it cuts through all the bullshit that retail stuff leans on and has a religion around. No matter what school of thought you have, the market. OK, if we can personify the market like some people like to believe it is, it's the buying and selling pressure. OK. OK, well, how is it that the market collectively decides that it's going to run against the traders that use harmonic patterns that day? And maybe not like off traders or the supply and demand guys that have been using the demand zones, if that's what they're going to use to get into their trades. Uh, why is it that they get they get targeted that day and not the Elliott Wave traders? Because they're never all in agreement. And when you take a step back and you think about all this stuff like that, it's like there must be something else going on. Because is it like, OK, this week we're going to let Elliott Wave traders do well. Because you got to keep the book sales and course sales and the mentors that teach that bullshit. We got to keep them making money. And then we had to let the, uh, Dow Theory and GAN and her cycles uh, do well in the coming weeks, too. And then we got to come back to point and figure because, uh, you know, there's a lot of old heads still trading with that garbage. So how can you kill them all and not have to do very much and, and make it simple? Run old highs. Trade to inefficiencies. It's simple. You kill everybody. The, the algorithm doesn't need to know Wyckoff theory. The algorithm doesn't need to know what harmonic patterns are in play right now, what Gartley patterns there, what bat patterns there. I know all about all that shit, the butterflies, all that stuff. Okay. The only butterflies I see in, in trading is my students when they're doing it right. They get butterflies. OK, there's no fucking butterflies in patterns in, in the charts. That's, that's nonsense. It's garbage. OK, it, again, is another religion. It's a fairy tale. The truth is the market only goes up to tap into pending buy side liquidity or it goes up to rebalance and or redeliver to an inefficiency. That's all it goes up for. That's the only reasons why it goes up. The market goes down. To trade into sell side liquidity below and low or relative equal lows because there's pending orders down there or it goes down to a inefficiency that means like a fair value gap below market price to reprice to or rebalance that inefficiency that's the only reason why the markets go down i'm telling you to just go into the market with that mindset and forget everything else and suddenly the charts will start talking to you. It'll, it'll be clear what it's doing, where it's reaching for, where it's not going to go. Then when you understand the elements of time that I'm teaching you, you can time when it does these things. Wyckoff doesn't ever teach time. Elliot Wade does not teach the times I'm teaching these macros. They're, it's not there, folks. 
supply and demand, never mentioned it. Larry Williams never mentioned macro times. And he was my first mentor. By everything he has in writing, by every single one of them, okay? And I promise you, you'll never see that stuff there. He, thought he wasn't the inspiration for the macros. That, that's not where that came from. <laughs> that's not where that came from. <clears throat> What's another one? George Angel. No mention of a macro. His spyglass, his LSS uh, system for day trading the S&P makes no mention of it. Zero. Nope. So if we understand that the market makers are, they are the handlers, the owners of the algorithm, the price engine, the, the engine itself that delivers price. And I'll explain a little bit more detail what that means by price engine and how it delivers price. 